Yes, still in Sydney. That is where we are. Back chat, powered by Fleet Network. Um, very, very happy to have this man on. He played in the grand final last year, spent some of his best years of his life playing for the West Coast Eagles, but he now plays for the Sydney Swans, wearing his neat animal hat. <laughs> Tom Hickey joins us on Back Chat. How are you, mate? Yeah, good guys. How are you? Good. Very good. Neat animal hats. I can start right here. This is your company. You, you started this properly in the hub. You were running a logistics center out of one of the beds <laughs> drop shoes. i had i had luke shuey writing thank you notes uh, <laughs> <laughs> we we kicked off that round two like where the after yeah. the COVID. it was pre-covid i remember chatting to josh rotham and um the whole theory of it, like people want to go to eight 17 to 29 year old 30 year olds want to go to the footy and not look like a dork yes um and so i was like let's make a cool hat um that if you go to a cafe it's like just a hat if you go yes. to the footy oh you go for that team so yeah. um we did that and then it just like it was really like really easy with like online and and getting manufacturers and we did it over COVID, and then we launched i had to get it all sent because obviously we didn't know we we're going to start on, on the gold coast so yes. i just got everything sent to my old man in brisbane and he dropped it down halfway to gold coast and i i ran a, a bootleg hat company out of uh, <laughs> the royal pines oh good now we're gonna go through the whole journey but neat animal hats get on there at neat, uh, neat animal hats.com check them out hats beanies buckets you got buckets on there uh that was just like a special okay They'll, but we can we can do it if you're if you're a local sporting team or we do them as well so good. if you want to get a uh, minimum 10 maxes as many as you want so. now i usually <laughs> don't start with asking you questions about those things but i thought we'd get that out of the way while i'm wearing such a good hat on my head uh our first question we asked to guess and you've been a big fan of back chat you've actually appeared on back chat the original uh Ooh. before it was the greatness it is right now yeah, we yeah. ask a question every guest we have on um and you know we know you've played across four clubs in the afl you're the only player to have played in four different states you have you have that above everyone else that ever ever has played the game um you played in grand final you've done some great things you're a good ruckman great ruckman mm. just wanted to start <laughs> just wanted to start and say we don't care about those things just at the moment yeah i know your greatest sporting achievement not on the football field now i know you've played other sports so There'll be things coming to mind. Dan Const, we broke the trophy on the way over here to Sydney. It's a shame. It will live forever in our memories. Uh, it's cricket ball. It's five, cricket ball mounted on some wood, 5 for 16 in a, a grand final. Cricket. Under nines. 12s. Under 12s. 12s. Uh, under nine state hurdling champion right here. What do you got for us? Greatest sporting achievement? Uh, grade 7 D's cricket premiers. Wow. Oh, yeah. nice. D's. Yeah, so that was, that was up there. So there and was... I retired after that too. <laughs> Good. I made a, I made a 25 one game and got my name in the paper. Oh, so you had, had to retire. retire you had to retire. Yeah, I had to retire at 25. <laughs> <laughs> Held a press conference. Seven um, days. And I went to I, grade eight. I did volleyball. So, um, uh, but that's got to be up there. Seven days, um, 25, not out. So the average probably. Oh, yeah. That was once. Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. I wasn't very good at cricket. I wasn't very good. I'm not very good at a lot of sports, to be honest. You're I'm, not, I'm not that you're guy. State, you're state volleyballer. Yeah. But was, yeah. Is it because you're tall? Tall. <laughs> <laughs> and i was like yeah i uh i think i played 16 b's and then got like five centimeters taller and then the next year ended up making the state team and um got to go to new zealand which was nice yes the, like the good thing about the funny thing about sport in my family is that my sister was quite a good netballer and i was just the battler i was always the guy who just played every sport and never um which is like the b's and the c's and d's. Was, i was always the uh, d's for cricket and i was always the uh like the Got the participation award for playing all the sports and my sister got to travel a little bit through the country for netball and in grade 10 my old man felt really bad that i'd never got to travel so me and him went to europe for um two weeks like just a dad and son trip to europe for three weeks i think over um over september school holidays and then the next year i made like a state volleyball team got to go to new zealand and then started playing footy and have been able to travel since so my right. sister was pretty stitched up from that <laughs> so you know any trip to but, europe yeah but your, your old man mick he was a he was a rugby league player wasn't he yeah yep yeah he played with like lewis and all that back in the day so he was um a pretty handy rugby league player but um, i definitely wasn't so where'd you grow up brisbane so your old man's playing rugby league in brisbane you find your way through the ranks of volleyball junior levels but now you're a ruckman in the afl that's i wouldn't say there'd be too many people who have followed that path no no so i didn't we had like a school sport um it's very different obviously in, in perth and in victoria where like rugby was the the sport of choice and um 
we got to have one year where we played AFL and it was pretty much just like the rugby guys with feuds with other rugby guys played AFL and got into a fight and it was like two games or three games and I went and played that um and I, I was no good I was hopeless and then <laughs> I in Queensland they've got this thing called the rookie search program where if you're tall and coordinated and have gone well at another sport they try and get you to play AFL and I'd just made the state volleyball team in um, grade 12 and I was always a school sport guy and um as soon as school finished I was, felt a little bit lost like I wanted to I didn't really like volleyball in terms of it wasn't really a team thing it was just you know, six guys hugging and <laughs> like, <laughs> hu hugging up at every point and like there was like a lot of egos in that and um so I got asked to go for like a rookie search program which is like they go and test your um aptitude I guess and your ability and I didn't really want to do that so I didn't go to the testing day um and then I got called and asked if I want to go to the AIS for two weeks as a part of like the they do the AIS academy but they also get these tall players in and I was like oh the free trip to the AIS yeah I'll definitely do that but because I didn't say yes because I didn't go to the testing day they could only take two and I was a third but the condition of me saying yes was I had to go try out for the local rep team of um of footy yeah and like there's no I should not have made the team but I think they've just got this guy's tall he's coordinated we'll um like get him go like let him play and so I played the rep team then went and played Morningside under 18s um we won a flag in under 18s Premier which was huge player. yep and then got to play as a state 18 got to go to the AIS the end of that year yes and like the tall players in that program that weren't in the AIS it was like it was me Majak Dor, Jared Witts Ben Brown like end up being like there's a few others but we end up going like I was like I look back on it now and I was like oh shit and then played seniors like state 18s as a 19 year old and seniors for Morningside won another flag I was like footy is easy Premiership player. <laughs> got drafted the Gold Coast and didn't win a game for two years so <laughs> it all evened out a little bit but before we get to the AFL those Morningside premierships wasn't one of them were you rucking against Peter Everett and Trent Noble yeah so like two two very established AFL ruckmen come back to the quaffle, quaffle yeah just to don't quote it quaffle Quaff, renowned quaffle. <laughs> yes. I was more questioning whether it was called that uh I'm assuming they would have been receiving some sort of payment for their being down there they weren't down there to get themselves back in the AFL but they were like Peter Ever especially sure he was all Australian he, he a good player so you're just jumping around 18 year old yeah so I was like this is pre 100 interchanges on the bench as well so I pretty much just sat on the bench for the I played the last five minutes of the first three quarters Real and then we were down operator four goals coming to last and I came on fresh as and I got to have a run around and have a kick and we ended up um ended up winning by like two goals I think um and like I didn't cause I didn't follow football so I didn't really know Spider Everett and Trent Noble and like I just talk some shit and uh, well so you're, you're underselling yourself a fair bit you were second in the league best and fairest that year no, that was under 18s. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So you can play. Well, I jumped off two legs, I think. <laughs> like, we're talking Queensland under 18s, like, <laughs> just a local comp. I, like, yeah, I, that was the, my first year playing footies, and I, it was fun. I, some of my best mates, like, all my best mates are still from that team, which yes. has been awesome. So, um, so given you're from Queensland, um, that Gold Coast side, you effectively weren't drafted. Like, you, you're, you're a local. So they had um they had access to any Queenslanders through the draft concession. Like so, so any Queenslander or Northern Territory. Um huh. and they were able to like pick up players and trade them um in that trade period as well. And I was like ninety percent sure I was getting picked up and traded to North Melbourne. Right. So that was like it was all pretty much locked. I had to go to the my manager's office, sign it during trade period. Um and and I'm I'm a second year electrical apprentice at this time at this wow. time in my life so I'm working sort of 40 hours a week and um Gold Coast didn't I trained a little I trained maybe three times with Gold Coast like took a couple of days off and got to train with them but apart from that they didn't show a lot of interest um in me my that draft year and North did a little bit and um it was going to be me and Cam Richardson I think with like two players that got picked up and would have got traded to um North and it was a big like a big storm the night before and I was uh elevate lift mechanic like an electrician and lift mechanic and the um, we were building a lift and it got flooded in the pit so I got to work at 6 a.m that morning and they said mate go home it's going to be wet so I went home and just started listening to trade radio thinking maybe I'm a chance and I saw Cam Richardson get picked up and traded and 
sent. I was like, oh, maybe just because I'm like a genuine no name. Maybe they just didn't put my name in it. And maybe I ended up <laughs> at North. Like, and I, I think I got a phone call from Cam Joyce or Brad Scott being like, sorry, mate, like we couldn't get your Gold Coast one to keep you. I was like, ah, oh, all right. So does that, does that mean I've been picked up? Hey. <laughs> and then I think I got a call like like two hours later from the Gold Coast being like, oh yeah, we've, just, we've kept you like welcome to the Gold Coast. <laughs> and I was like, oh, awesome, <laughs> great. Like, My dreams have come true. Yeah, thanks for, so, thanks for letting me know. Yeah, it was um, really bizarre. And I like, yeah, um, it was all a bit of a weird time. I had a girlfriend in Melbourne at the time who wasn't wrapped that I got picked up, which is pretty strange. Thank you. Um, so, because I, I was thought I was going to go to Melbourne, so I was going yes. to, yeah. But anyway, um, there, yeah, and then I got picked up, so, so I was pumped. Up, yeah, no, but the Gold Coast, that's the inaugural team, right? Like, yeah. So yeah. The, when you went and trained, they were playing in the VFL. So you, we had yeah. Charlie Dixon on, um, he was at the club before you, right? It was yeah, so he was like one of the first yeah. signees. So he was so he was my age, but because I was like went through that later, the year later. Yeah. Um, pretty much that whole Queensland team the year before were like Gold Coast Academy, Gold Coast people, yes. and they did the TAC Cup. Yes. As Gold Coast, and then then they went to the VFL. So what's the Gold Coast like when you roll up? Like, is it a footy club or is it still? Well, I was there before. No, yeah, definitely Demountables. Like it was Demountables <laughs> until I left, but. Um, I think I showed up, I was there before the draft. So I trained like two weeks before the draft. So um, the older guys had just come in, like Brownie and Nathan Bock and Ablett and Harbs and all that. So they were there and then there was like a group, but we're still waiting on like 15, 20 players because we're getting, we're about to draft them. So right. um, all a bit of a blur because I was still so new. And, and you've been to four of, clubs now. Yeah, so I feel like it's a little yeah like, a few lifetimes most ago. Guys, most guys and girls, we come in here. So do you remember this? Do you remember that? You've got to flick through four different <laughs> folders within your brain. Of, oh, absolutely, I still say like the wrong um, yeah thing clubs, you, like positionings or like I call wellness or we call it markers, but I call it wellness or like and it's just <laughs> yeah. Did you like you didn't you say you didn't really um, get around footy, but were you aware of how good Gary Ablett was? Like being at the club was that like a big deal even for you, or were you just like yeah, it's just another guy. Oh, like you knew, like you knew Gary Ablett was like, you know, he was getting paid one point nine million dollars a year. You know, like it's <laughs> like every. I was, I were was you, a big, I was not, a big rugby league. Were man. you not getting paid? No, nah, just <laughs> unders now. Like, um, <laughs> but Carmichael Hunt, I loved Carmichael Hunt growing up. Like a big right. rugby league fan, so I was pumped to see K. Like it was, oh my god! Like I went to a rugby league training camp, and he was like the Brisbane Broncos player. So that was like kind of cool for me. Um, but yeah, no, like he was. I remember. I think he signed when I was at draft camp. I think it was like, I remember sitting in the eating hall and saw him sign. So that was kind of cool. I want people to think about this. We're going to do this towards the end of Tom's chat. I've heard you claim that you have played with the, you can name a best starting 22 of people you've played with and you don't think you can be matched. Yeah, I'd, I find it pretty hard. Like it'd be hard to beat me. Across your career, uh, Gold Coast, St Kilda, West Coast, Sydney. And, and this is anyone I've played with, but them in their prime. So not them at that time. Yes. So but you have to prime. have played with them. Yeah, had to have played a game with yes. them. Yeah. So you, you you have the best side. It's a fair pool. You gave me a little pre-warning and we've built one. So as Tom's talking, if you're watching, if you're listening, just think about the players he's played with and we're building a team at the end of this show. And we've built one. You have one in your mind. And yeah. We've got some ins and outs probably. But Gary Ablett great of the game yeah he'd uh, have to just make it. yeah um he was your captain wasn't he was yep he yeah he was my captain yeah at the time yeah what did you, you any recollections of gary ablett superstar captain of the club um like he was an absolute gun and playing under guys who are unbelievable captains as well like he was a he's an incredible player a really incredible person but he very much through that part of his career he was he knew what made him a good player and he knew um what he needed to do for his body. So he didn't train a whole lot in terms of like, he wasn't always out on the track because of we were a young team that needed to train a lot and he was an older player that needed to manage his body. So yes. um, through those years, he was like Michael Riscatelli and Nathan Bock were like really high in those like leadership conversations yes. as well. They were, um, and even sort of even Carmichael Hunt as a professional athlete who's really proud, who was at the top of his game for two sports, he came in knowing he was pretty shit at football. Yeah. So he had to work his ring off to 
get to AFL standards. So his like work ethic in terms of like professionalism and want to get better was like, I thought he was incredible for the football club. I know he's copped a pretty bad rap through his time, but I thought he was incredible for that club. Do you remember your first game? You debuted in round 22 of that first year. So you had a little yeah. bit of time to wait in the sidelines. Do you remember your first game? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'll never forget it. And it, like you said, a bit of time to wait, but I, that was like way sooner than I ever thought I'd play football. Yes. That was my third year ever of playing a game. So. Yes. <laughs> you kicked two goals? Is that right? No, one goal, one. First, first kick hit two the post. Two shots on goal. So I was going to ask, first kick hit the post. Wow. Oh. Yeah. That's probably even crazy club. First yeah, I reckon probably hit better. The, hit the yeah. post. <laughs> and I, I could still, because like we didn't have huge crowds there, I could still hear like the boys in the stands being like, no. like Because it, it's from <laughs> like, I remember that came in, Rory Thompson was playing forward at the time. He made a marking contest and I crumbed it randomly. <laughs> and I've run like towards the boundary <laughs> instead of corridor because I'm a left footer. So it was on that side. And I've kicked it and it started like, drifting like coming across and then had that tail and i was like this might sneak through here for a second <laughs> wow didn't hit the post and then kicked what then at the time was described as the worst first goal in history so why why <laughs> have you oh mate, what is it i could probably show you it if you want it i think i've uh, got it somewhere the, the boys will the boys will clip it up tell me what happened so um <laughs> the worst goal first goal in afl so history. i've run off the bench like on off the bench i've come on and the ball's going down the far wing um heading towards the grandstand side, not the not the screen side. I think, oh, I'm a chance here. I might get forward. So I've run hard forward and Luke Russell's got the ball in the goal square and he's getting tackled and he's handballed it to me. <laughs> this is going to be gift easy. Gift. And I'm like, I'm, but I'm not a hero. Like, this is not me. I'm not the guy who kicks it 50 rows back. Like, that's just not who I am. I'll grab her through because I'm a nice, humble man. <laughs> I grab it through the same time I think maybe Bernie Vince or another player has run across the goal line and it's hit him in the legs and bounced back to me. At this point, I'm a metre and a half from the goal line and I'm like, oh, well, there's still a second chance. I'll just pick it up and put it through. Grab I it. fumbled it. <laughs> and as I picked it up, it's dropping down like my body and I've just got a toe on it as it's got across the line. <laughs> and I'm still first goal and I got two kicks for it. So it's probably smart <laughs> at, at the end, but it was... um. Yeah, it was a bit of a dog's breakfast. Oh, man. I have, you yeah, haven't, it's good. The boys use this. I didn't know. I, I, mate, I, I can't even remember the, that. Seen the it. best thing about it was, so like, I've I've always, oh, a bit of my history, a bit of my career, I've, unless, apart from the last couple of years, I've copped like a little bit of fanfare. I've got long hair and look ridiculous, but I've always just kind of like just floated through. And, and that year of the Gold Coast, every year, every week, it's like whoever debuted got like a back page of the, right on the paper um and i'm like debuting around 22 i'm like i might get a back page here <laughs> it was the same time joel tippett was playing his first game for the club against kurt at adelaide and nathan ablett came in for the team so i was just like the paragraph at the bottom <laughs> i think you will also be playing <laughs> yeah. in the game yeah <laughs> and then i get home and i'm in bed i'm pretty amped. like we lost by 60 but i played my first game and i've flicked on the news and it's like um and in other news Gold Coast um, young ruckman Trent Hickey has kicked what seems to be the worst goal in the worst Trent first goal in. I was like, oh. no, why? <laughs> so uh, it's, yeah, it's good. Good start. Okay. Just, just, we take highlights of this show. It doesn't matter what Tom talks about for the rest of the show. <laughs> we must find Trent Hickey footage. I've, I've got it on my phone. Great. We'll be, we'll be accessing <laughs> yeah. that straight after this point. That is about as good as it gets. Trent Hickey. Thank you very much, Gold Coast no, Suns. I, I think to, the to best thing, because it was two years, like two games ago in the season, they did a top 10 moments of Gold Coast Suns inaugural year. And I play, like a fan voted. It came ninth. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, not many guys getting those top tens. Absolutely, that is very good, mate. Unreal. Not too often I get caught up. I, I just <laughs> didn't know that was coming. That was good. So, all right. So after this uh, <laughs> incredibly, incredibly successful time at Gold Coast, uh, you asked to be traded back home. Demanded. It tells me here. Demanded. demanded no, traded back home. No, the Gold Coast demanded a first round selection. Uh, yeah. So you asked. Back home. So I'm from Brisbane. Sorry. You asked to be traded to a Melbourne club. Yeah. Victoria. And, and so. Through the time, I, I don't think I was very, oh, speaking perfectly candid here, yeah. um, I don't think Bluey liked me. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> I think. Fair enough. Um, and um, I was like a young player who wanted to play and asked a lot of questions. Um, and then at that time, we had uh, Zach Smith, 
Josh Fraser, Roy Thompson was a ruckman, Charlie Dixon was a second ruck, Tom Nichols was a ruck, Dan Gorange was a ruck. Some depth. And all report, like, absolutely locked. Kurt Tippett's coming. Kurt Tippett's coming to Gold Coast. Yeah, he's he coming too. home. It was absolutely locked. And that deal got done and then revoked. And and in the meantime, I was in and out, North Melbourne again, and St Kilda were like, hey, we think you're okay. We'd like to bring you in. We've got some sort of older, well, I mean, Todd Goldstein wasn't old at the time and Ben McAvoy not the time, but we didn't really have a lot under that. Um, and this was the time, like this was, I don't know if it's something, they used to like really go after players and like take them out for dinner and oh, I just felt like a king, like it was great. I felt wanted. 20 year old rock. Like, oh my God. Um, and so then that was kind of all came through and then I went to call Bluey after my end of year and um, I've called him and he was on a plane back to Perth and he missed it. He didn't, he missed a phone call. Mm. In that flight, Kurt Tippett had reneged and gone to Sydney. And that was like a big part of my reasoning to him that, and like, I'll, you know, once you're sort of done, once, you, once you've made your decision, you've made a decision. And I've, he's heard that news and then I've called him to tell him we're getting traded and he's just, he's let me have it a little bit. Great. Wow. Um, well, he's allowed to be emotional. He's, yeah, he's a human being. Yeah. yeah. Um, Maybe he did rate you then. Yeah. Well, he's like, we just won't he, trade you. He's like, he's like, he, first he goes, you think you're so much better than you are. I was like, oh, well, I don't think. Like I'm just, okay and he's like and we won't trade you we'll pick him we got first pick in the pre-season draft we'll pick you back up i was like do list yourself pick you back up and this is like a, like a little bit of a story was like you know uh in that pre-season um the pre-season the year before they sat us down they said guys we've we've got like we think we've got 35 players or 33 players that can play every game this year like we've profiled the list um josh caddy you played two games last year but we think you're up for it. We think your body's up for it. Tom Hickey, you played two games last year, but we don't think you're quite there. We don't think you're up to it. We don't think you're great. You not to say you might not play one, but we just don't think you'll play this year. This is in front of everyone, just unprovoked. Like, <laughs> and I didn't, and like, I was pretty real about where I was in my football and I didn't really think anything of it until like three guys came up to me after the game. Like, are you right, mate? Like, you are right with that? I was like, oh yeah. And then I ended up playing round one, which was like a, so I kind of like, and in my exit interview of my first year, he's like, oh, I had to fight to keep you out of the team for the first, like for three weeks. Right. And I was like, oh, <laughs> thanks. Thanks. Cheers. So, so it was an up and down relationship. A little bit, so, yeah. But um, so you get one dying and your first trade experience, it's, it's remarkable we'll be able to speak about three of those, but you, you, your first one. That so, was the most anxious. That was right. definitely the most anxiety inducing. Because of where you could go or well, just go. like and they telling, were like and blue is telling you isn't there well they're like yeah and scotty clayton's like we're not we won't trade joe like we'll just pick you back up and also like just the unknown of like right i've never done this and it was like a four-week trade period at the time <laughs> which is too much <laughs> um did you have a manager all, at the time like helping you through this or oh yeah 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 so he's like great he's I've, I've had the same manager the whole time he's really good at getting you traded so <laughs> 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 um <laughs> like no endorse like none of those endorsement stuff like he's there for <laughs> player movement so um so you get traded for pick 13 of I, I went uh, through look what? it was me and pick 25 went for pick 13 so it's uh, a slide all right i'll still say traded for pick 13. the facts are uh, that you I'll got say plus 25. they got a pick 13. and they picked up jesse lonigan he didn't play a whole heap so okay well, feel that's their fault isn't it that's not yours um tom hickey plus pick 25 for pick 13. Yeah, I've got them all chronicled here. They get longer and longer. So, uh, <laughs> so the first one, you get to St Kilda. You must be happy then. I mean, you go from a, a club that you've effectively it's a start up. Yeah. To a an existing footy club, St Kilda. Forty. It was coming into the hundred fortieth year, which big, was kind of really cool. Big difference. Yeah, definitely. Like, fan base, fan base, and just like history and like names on the wall and yeah, it was very cool. Brick, and, brick and you know brick walls and for the training facilities. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. We're in Seaford, so. Bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, as well as players you're playing with as well, and who's the coach at the time? Scott Waters. Yep. Um, so he was short lived. I think he was there for a year when I was there. But yeah, like you're on the end, you caught the end of that 09 10. So it's you know, Rewalt, Hayes, Montagna, Dal Santo, yes, Milne, yes, Fisher, Gilbert, Quilt. Yeah. Um, I think he's given Quilt. us. Quilt. The team. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. You got to fight for. You got to fight for spots in bet, <laughs> yeah. the best twenty-two to play with Tom Hickey. Um, so, 
I'm just trying to think of the success around that time. I mean, you play for five years at St Kilda. Six. Six years? Yeah. So it's your longest stint in any footy club? Yeah. Um, it took me a little bit longer. How do you reflect in time there? You had some ups and downs with the injury, but yeah, also had probably some of your, your best years before the back end of your career. Yeah, so it was like 2012 or 2013, I um, played as like a second ruck to Benny McAvoy. Yep. And then that last game of that year, we played Sydney and it was me, me and Benny versus Pike, Mike Pike and Mumford. Canadian. Great Canadian, my Pike. Yeah, and we both weren't going great um that game and then it was like who to sub out because that was the the beautiful time of the vest and um they decided to sub out benny mack and i actually had a pretty good quarter that last quarter i think i won the hit outs and i had like six or seven touches and then they were like oh this guy might he might be all right for us and jokes on them but um (laughs) (laughs) but then they so they end up trading benny mack traded benny mack at the end of that year to hawthorne so he can thank me for three premierships um <laughs> wow and then the captaincy was he the captain as yeah well? captain as well yep um and then the top um and then the next year i played the first four or five and was going okay as a sort of young ruck and then did my toe a couple of times was jabbing it to play jabbing it to train and then broke my foot because i was running on the outside of my foot right. so i missed like eight or nine weeks came back played a game because i couldn't train had really bad patella tendinopathy had to go get a surgery and that kind of ended my year in 2014 yeah it's kind of missed like a whole year and like the the best of, what i like about that one was that year i started off pretty well and i was like a 22 year old rock and they're like oh this guy might be something let's every year they gave two two players from every team like a lego like it was like a the mini me fig, like mini figurines oh. and i got one it was me and maybe jack steven and then I played pretty much VFL the whole 2015, and these things got released the start of 2015. <laughs> so they needed a little Sandy Zebra jersey for that one. <laughs> um, but uh, and then you got one still. Oh, Surely yeah. I had one, and I think Lou's probably ripped its head off. And we're gonna have to source one of those <laughs> yeah. as well, please. Um, and I remember saying something on Twitter. It's like, no offense to the guy, I'm sure he's a nice guy. But why is Tom Hickey got? A... <laughs> That's elite. Um, That's great. And then 2015, I'm in and out again. Um, Billy Long was a ruck. I sort of played forward ruck. And then 2016 i reckon from 2016 i was reasonably sort of consistent i didn't play a whole heap 2017 but yeah. i thought my form in vfl was all right what number were you at gold coast one what number were you at st kilda oh sorry i was 40 at gold coast one at st kilda 16 31 so it's yeah, something in the best, 20s you're wearing your best number right now from what so anyways uh, when you, when you said you did your toe was that what sort of injury was that because that seemed like a uh, a ruckman thing i did like, like a i sprained the capsule you know it's not turf toe i didn't do turf toe. toe i had turf toe last year it was grim not far no it was awful it wasn't the second toe because of that injury in 2014. wow so i've got brute bunion now because it all stretched and went across wow you don't have to look at it i'm gonna <laughs> but I'm, just, I'm just like there's a big raise bit up <laughs> i just i remember like not knowing what turf toe was and just thinking like was, did the they like, step on a barnacle injury. or something and there's like <laughs> It's some like gangrene in the toe or like <laughs> I don't know. It just, it just sounds. I don't. I remember like Aaron Sandler was just always he had just had it all the time, didn't he? Yeah. yeah. So if Scotty Waters isn't Waters isn't coach for the entire time, who who comes in after him? So then Alan Richardson, yeah, came and he was there for the rest of my. How time many time. coaches have you had at AFL level? One, two, Louis three, McKenna, three, four, Scotty five. Waters, five. Uh, Alan Richardson, Adam Simpson, John Lama. <laughs> um, best of hard to ask i think like it'd be out of horse and semo yeah um different very different coaches in the way they coach i think horses um he's like as passionate as you probably he, he gauge so the stuff on tv where he's up in the box yeah passion passion like very very much pa- and like so invested and like he's give some like pretty strong feedback, but because he's so invested and he's so, he's quite, his emotional intelligence midweek is really high. So you can kind of- You can cop it. Both of it's um, give, give and take where Simo tactically mm. was incredible. Like mm. I've, I always thought that his, the way he could pick up game trends on his own bat and so he kind of, he could get a feel of what, what the room needed, whether they need to be brought down or brought up. I thought he was really good. Yeah, you would have seen that along the way. Like, again, you might not be able to remember it all, but like the differences in coaching styles or 
game plans. How do you go pick it up game plans? Like you, you have that many game styles and game plans and <laughs> yeah, game modes. I, I think the good thing about modern footies, they're all pretty similar now. True. Like they all want to defend the same way. And, but I, it's something as I've got older, I've like really enjoyed like the psychology of football, like of football clubs and how it's all gone and as you can kind of take a step back and realize what it is it's yeah you can kind of look at it and see how like young guys respond to some things and other guys respond to it. it's been like i've really enjoyed that so st kilda comes and goes a little bit um the opportunity comes up to go to west coast like how does that part go down uh, well it came it was in the age that scott lycett was got offered a six-year deal to st kilda to st kilda yeah back page of the age right and i was like oh well that's doesn't bode well for <laughs> Big Tom Hickey. Um, <laughs> Trent. And so I went to uh, Simon Lethlane's office and just said, hey, it's back page, like, wow. is, is, like, let's have a mature conversation about this. Wow. And he's like, yep, we've offered what we think is a pretty good deal. Um, right. I was like, okay. And he's like, and like, to be honest, if you stay, like, we'll probably play him. Like, you might, like, we're going to pay him that much. We're probably going to play him. So I would if you wanted to look elsewhere i'm sure that'd be fine i'm sure any like named like three or four clubs that he's like they're probably interested and at the same time west coast got wind that scott was going to leave and so they said hey would you be interested in right. catching up and so it was kind of like i think my read on it was saints had no picks they wanted to get hannah Ree through the door they threw five or six names at the wall and mine stuck and so they were kind of happy for me to go right because i was still contracted i still had a year left at saints but Scott Lyson doesn't get to the Saints. No. Is this another Kurt Tippett thing? Like, no, well, they, but they, they kind of already said, well, we're like, we've shown our hand. Like, we're not, right. we want so someone didn't else. Didn't that happen the first time? Kind of same thing? Like, Kurt Tippett? Like, yeah, but like different, yeah. like different times of your career. I was a young, like, True. probably fourth in line True. rock. And I was just went for opportunity. This one was like, well, we want someone else. So this is at the end of 2017, end, end of 2018. Yeah. So West Coast just won the flag. Yeah. Was that something that excited you? Like once, obviously that's a pretty, that's got to be a pretty hard conversation to have. Walk into what was Simon Lethlane at the time, GM or yeah, yeah, he was the, yeah, the so, GM. So to walk in and be like, "What's going on here?" and he's like, "That's exactly right. It's not rumors." That must be a difficult conversation to have. Oh, like, like I don't know, I'm too cruisy, mate. I'm pretty pragmatic about it. I was like, "Oh well, like that's what it is." Like, yeah, right. and I, I was still contracted, so I knew I was going to be playing football. So I wasn't like, right. and I didn't hate my time at the saints i love my time at the saints but if you're not wanted you're not wanted and someone else is like hey mate we want we want to give you a three year contract it's yeah. like well and the only thing that was originally i didn't overly give it a lot of thought at the start was was getting married at the end of the year chloe would she want to move to perth as soon as i raised it to her she's like yeah let's go i was like oh done so so was so that exciting going to, like to a successful footy club like just yeah it was play. huge it was awesome like watching them I, I didn't watch the game i was on my honeymoon but they won the flag and you go into like a, i'd never played finals and so all of a sudden you go into a team where right. they want you to play nick was injured at the time you probably thought me and vards would play together and um get to play like being wanted at football clubs huge mm. and i kind of knew my kind of knew i was like a bit of a stopgap for nick as well so kind of going in and knowing what your role was was fine and went there and really enjoyed it because you haven't been the gary ablett or the lenny hayes or, or th those guys that you know they're not looking on the board for magnets to see if they're playing yeah or, i still do that yeah. yeah correct so you're talking about being wanted like is do you think that's an important thing for you know a lot of players or do you think it's personally well, i've always like, i've consistently said through my career <laughs> sorry yeah every time i had an interview like after a good year or like oh what what would you put your success down to and i've I've kind of always said like when you feel like you got the backing of a coaching group and you feel like you got the back like the coaches back to you feel trusted yeah you always seem to play better like when you're not worried about whether your spot's in jeopardy every week or you're not worried about every wrong thing's going to get you dropped mm. you can just sort of go out and play and if you have a couple of bad contests you know that you're backed in to fix it yourself yes so that like that's been huge that was always huge in my career when you when you first played um St Kilda as for when you're at west coast was there a bit of fu about it you know after they sort of said you know we're not really wanting to play you anymore did you have some no i didn't play you? him until i was at sydney wow so that was, oh, that was my ex ex girlfriend <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, i did my hamstring against 
Geelong. We we got pumped in Geelong in 2019. That's a lot of games we got pumped in Geelong, <laughs> West Coast. This one was good though because we um, <laughs> chartered the flight and flew straight to Geelong and the Adelaide. front half of us was us and the back half were supporters. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, and I, like, Best I, time. I, was, I played pretty well that game actually. And so people were like, good work, Tom. And then we'd I like remember stare that. at you everyone. had a shitload of clearances. Yeah, I, I right? think I had 27. 27 I'm touches. Tr- yeah. Oh, shit. Um, and but I got through the game fine, and then um, Monday and Chloe booked flights back to Melbourne. She was going to come watch. We're playing Saints next week, and then I was like, "Oh, my hammy's actually a little bit sore on Monday," and turns out I tore it during the game. So, so you missed playing St Kilda. Yeah. So you got traded for St Kilda for those playing along at home. Gold Coast to St Kilda was you plus pick twenty five, pick thirteen. St Kilda to West Coast was Tom Hickey plus a West Coast fourth rounder for pick 39 and a fourth rounder so they effectively swapped fourth rounders and valued it at 39. yeah so you've moved back a little backwards. bit of a used car yep back, <laughs> backwards a little bit it comes for the people at home it comes good because uh, i've got a i've got an ace in the hole here so don't worry great yeah good yep. really mm. do i know about this ace in the hole no, probably not okay you're, you're <laughs> talking about how my values dropped but I'm just saying. Um, I'm just reading the facts. A little, a little beauty called draft points. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, there we go. <laughs> so that's the trade to West Coast. You get there. Nick Nananui, you know, in at, at that period of time, um, he'd done his ACL at the end of 2018. So you know there's an opportunity coming up. You pretty much play all games in that first year. You're yeah, I missed the two for Hammy and then that was it. That's yeah. right. So is that at the time... You know, that's what you, you know, is that your best year of footy? Is it what you think, for, you know, competing for a spot? You're playing finals that year? Yeah, play finals. Final. So that was, yeah, yeah. It'd be 2016 or 2021, uh, 2019 at that time. Like yeah. 2016, I played just about every game. But this will, I played, this was definitely my most winning season. Yes. Actually. I think I, it was, it was ridiculous. I remember some stat at the time is I'd won however many games at Saints and I'd equaled that in my first year at, yes. you know, not equaled it, but got pretty close. Yeah. Um, so yeah, no, that was like, that was fun. It was a fun year. Um, and, but you can't quite get back to that. Well, you can't get to that grand final that I know you say that you, 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 you know, your journey hasn't, it's not you know the same as some people. You play volleyball, you're from Queensland. You're some tall lanky kid that jumps on the Gold Coast list and find all, all this stuff, but you still want to win a flag, right? Absolutely. Playing yeah. a grand final, win a flag. Absolutely. So you get to do that at Sydney, playing a grand final. But not a West Coast. Was that sort of something like a? Did you did you look on at the guys that had played in Grand Final? I mean, West Coast. There was always like you always have that envy, and yeah. like everyone talks about it, and you're like, I want to like that would be awesome. Like this is a chance that we and I like was, had a fair bit of belief that we could get there if our, if we played the way we would. But we were really hot and cold that year. Like we either yeah. won or we got beat by forty. Yeah. Um. And so it's like if everyone showed up and played really well, we'd. We could definitely give it a red hot crack but it was just whether or not what we'd give that day yeah you know, a little bit um but i like those dreams probably then COVID hit yeah and shortened games and you're not going to play nick only played 70 minutes and it's a 100 minute game so you're not going to play me for 30 minutes you know yes and so i was kind of like oh well got to play a final did you get the, the feeling at all that after um the players that won in 2018 was there the same sort of desire to to win in 2019? I wasn't there in 2018, so it's hard to you know yeah. like it's hard to. I could answer. <laughs> it's it's hard to like find your motiva- like find what people's motivations were, and I think a lot of it was driven for like Shep and Nick and Gaffy and like those guys that missed out, and there were still guys that were playing waffle that wanted to have a crack, and there's guys that are just naturally super competitive and want to win, so. For for the three or four or five that might have had a, a bit less of a shine on it, I think there's still there was still a genuine desire. It's just um, a lot of it comes to all sorts of things. Like mm. you, when you, how much do you really want it at that when the heat's actually on? And and also like you need a little bit of luck at times. You need good injuries. You need like you need all sorts of things. By 2020, um, you know, you starting to become a senior player in sides, uh, your third side. Um, but you end up, we end up in a hub. What, what's, I, I always like our time together as teammates, like footy, footy wasn't everything to you. And that's not in a bad way. You had, you had different things going on. So as we said at the, at the top, you're effectively running a business out of the hub. I was doing similar things, 
we're, we're running like an e-commerce division at West Coast <laughs> Eagles Hub. What are your memories about that? Because Chloe was there with you, had a partner yeah, so in she, there with a, with a she small went child. Straight, she went Blue. straight to Brisbane, that first one. She stayed the That's first right. hub, she was in Brizzy, and then the second hub, they came in. We, we did two. Yeah. I mean, I kind of knew, like, I played my 100th in that round one. Yeah. And I, I don't know if you remember it, but I remember it clearly because I hadn't had a touch. Oh, of course I remember it. That's right. <laughs> so, uh, was it the fourth quarter? You fought? Yeah, because I, I barely played. I played like 40 minutes and I had got close a lot of times so, and i was on and just couldn't get used this is before we got to the hub and we played melbourne at optus stadium empty stadium it was like the week before the whole world shut down oh, that's right they announced before the game this will be the last yeah, yeah. game for a bit yeah. and so um sky sitting in the coach's box because i didn't get picked for the thousandth time in my career and um we were watching the game we we're getting into um harmsy um for most of it trying to heat him up because there was no crowd so there was just a bunch of us in the i'm, I'm almost certain vards was there with me and we were heating up anyway Tom Hickey playing his 100th game. No banner. Definitely. No banner. No, couldn't run out with the no kids. Fanfare. Couldn't run out with Lou. No nothing. Um, he had Red, had a t halfway through the fourth quarter against Max Gordon, had not had a touch of the football in his 100th game. And in saying that, I was on the bench. I was done. I was, I was, there's five minutes left, four minutes left. I, was, I came off and then Nick ran off. He's like, mate, you got to finish the game in your 100th. We're up by 60. Nick's like, mate, Get on. I was like, thanks, mate. I hadn't so touched you, it. Yeah, did you know you hadn't touched Absolutely it? Absolutely, I knew I hadn't touched it. And so then I we I've, knew. Yeah, I know. I've I ran out the center bounce and we'd just kicked a goal. And then the window comes open and I hear, Hey Jet Boy, give Reg a kick. He hasn't had one yet. And Gorn looks at Gorn, he looks at me and he goes, You haven't had a kick? I go, mate, I haven't had a touch. <laughs> was the window me yelling that? Yeah, that was you. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that was you. And then I end up grabbing it out of the ruck that that very next play and kicked it forward and I've turned around and given you the finger and <laughs> celebrated to you because I got my touch. So this is mid garden five minutes ago. He goes up for the ruck contest, instead of tapping it, grabs it, kicks it. It's a scrubbing, shocking <laughs> kick, right? Couldn't have told you where it was. Reg is in the middle <laughs> celebrating. <laughs> That's not watching the ball. His ruck was run off, got the ball. Mascon could have kicked a goal. No, mate. I ended up having four, I think, for the game. You did, but at the time, you were standing in the middle, both well, hands raised. Right. Like gave you had his 35th. <laughs> 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 and <laughs> then um, Simo in that post game was like, Reg, I was figuring out what I was going to have to say <laughs> for your 100 without getting a touch, but good on you, mate. You got it late. <laughs> that was good. So, so Max just sort of let you take another no, 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 no. After oh. him saying, oh, you haven't had a kick. No, no. The he was pretty that. flat. He He's would have been trying to, try to keep him. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, geez. I, I, again, I'd forgotten about it. That's one of the great moments. <laughs> like one of the great moments. No one in the crowd sitting there watching. Got to find your enjoyment. Screaming at Jet Boy to get him a kick. <laughs> That's very good. Uh, so we go through the hubs together. Um, that's pretty grim. I, I don't really want to break down the COVID hubs, to be honest. I mean, other than the fact, probably from a difference point of view, yeah, having your little one, like like a like a baby, like effectively, like Lou, who's four now. Yeah. Um, I, I think it was like a really good time to be actually like, you know, be able to connect with your team and stuff like that. I really enjoyed like spending time with you and spending yeah. time with me and JK got up every morning and had like coffee together at like six o'clock in the morning. And it was like really nice to like form relationships outside of football as well as being inside of football. Like I thought that was yeah, that's a good point. A real um, highlight of that. Not like no doubt like you and Hammer bonded in the hub. Yep. And like if there wasn't a hub, he's probably not doing this with you and stuff like that. Like it's a very good point, Tom. So he's always been a smarter man than me. Um there's and there was and like then Lou, like COVID was great for me in terms of I had a baby and we got to spend nine weeks together and then he came into hubs and I live like I've been very much a part of his life no end and like it, I'm probably getting my phone's lighting up now because it's getting a bit late and I've you've added a couple, at home. You've yeah added a couple you've added but it was like it, I've that was great like I and I, I kind of that at that point um Bailey Williams was coming on and I I was a realist I was like hey do you really want me playing like I'm getting old I'm almost 30 Nick's playing, do you want? And so I kind of just took on like more of a coaching role mm. in terms of like still trying to have some influence on the team winning. So I did a lot of ruck coaching with, because Fraser McInnes was our ruck coach at the time who'd never rucked in his life. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, I kind of I kind of took on a bit of ruck coaching and then I was, they were going to extend me that year and move some of the money to then do a, sort of be a bit more of a mainstay ruck coach. Yes. Um, but Sydney was said, do you want to, do you want to be a ruckman? <laughs> so no, maybe yeah so, and, <laughs> and and covid was 
a real eye opener of to how isolating Perth was at the time, and, and Perth is in terms of like it's such a long flight, and all the borders were locked. And you both, friend, and you're both from over. East. We're both from Brisbane. Yeah, no one had really spent a lot of time with Lou, and we're like, if we're going to go again and have another one child, um, <laughs> like it's going to be really hard. So the opportunity to get closer to home was. And Simo was incredible about that. He was, yeah. He's like, mate, like you've done everything right here, and if it's for family reasons, I can't begrudge it. And that's what it ended up being. And then I ended up coming and being able to play footy as well. So it was huge. You got traded to Sydney at the end of twenty twenty one, four. So end of twenty twenty. End of twenty twenty. Yes. My apologies. West Coast Sydney. Uh, West Coast trade. Tom Hickey, pick thirty four, pick sixty. For a future second, future third, 58, and 62. Mm-hmm. Package deal. Assets. Mm. The package. Yeah. Is this your ace in the hole? Errol Goulden. Really? Errol Goulden draft points. Right. So you... they knew they knew Brent Braden Campbell was going to get picked up early and yeah. then you had to had to match his bid. Hoping oh. he would get picked up after Logan McDonald, because I had pick three yes. or pick four. So I got Logan McDonald, then got BJ, pick four or five or whatever it was, and they knew they had to have some points left up of their sleeve to get Errol. And Tom Hickey, bringing the baggage of points, <laughs> got Errol Goulden, who could be, well, will be a superstar for a long, long time. So I'm done. I'm and, well, legacy, legacy. Once legacy. again, you've been completely self-deprecating this whole interview. They got Tom Hickey. You've had your best years of footy at, at Sydney. Yeah, yeah I've done. definitely played my best football. Yeah. And like uh, me knowing you for the little part of your journey, it's been awesome to watch. I remember speaking to you before the grand final last year. Um, you've played your best footy there. Yeah. Why? Is it as big as like, uh, you know, everything you've learnt along the way? I don't know. Old I, I, mate, experience. Like I knew why I'm playing good footy. I, I would have <laughs> done it a long time ago. <laughs> um, I, I think like I came in, I was 30. Came into, I came in from a successful club to a club. They, again... They wanted Ruckman, felt very welcome when I came in. I was very established in my head of who I was as a person and who I was as. So I didn't have any of those anxieties coming into a football club, like trying to fit in. Yeah, like I was kind of, I, I am who I am. And if you're going to, like, if you like me, you don't, if you like, whatever. Like I, I've got enough going on. Um, and I, and it was like, it's an awesome club. Like Sydney is an incredible football club and I'm forever indebted to them welcoming me in the doors and, and all that sort of stuff. But yeah, I, don't, I just went out and played footy and yeah. I've got a bit of a license to just play. Yes, yeah. like it, it wasn't as, there wasn't as much structure in terms of like where I need to be at certain points. It's just go and play. And, 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 and I'd played against a lot of players and I, I turned my game into a little bit like how can I nullify that Ruckman's influence? Mm. And that was kind of my whole mindset nullify that and then just get to work and i think having a good early couple of games sort of steadies the ship a little bit and you get a little bit more license to to do what you want the midfield coach i don't know if he's the only one but i reckon he'd be close to it your midfield coach is a ruckman yeah i he, he and that's huge because he actually one, understands one of the best ruckman to have ever played yeah, the game dan the, cox the best yeah uh that must be like that must have a big influence on you, whether or not he's like coaching you every day, but just having someone that actually sees the game as a ruckman. Yeah, yeah. And I think like it's, he understands the intricacies of like starting positions and like just little stuff like, oh, that ruckman's wearing a shin guard on the other shin. Like he's clearly like, you know, like that little, right. just like that stuff or You'd like that's that. cool. Yeah. just like things like I can actually say what I was thinking at the time. And he goes, oh, I get it. Rather like VB's like, mate, just get in front. Or like, I remember when we were, um, when I was coaching Nick and in the very first set of bounce of against Collingwood, it was a pretty big game. Nick stepped Brody Grundy. And I was like, I, I was coding it. I was, I was being very, a very good coach. Studious. I was a studious coach. I had my uh, huddle or whatever it's on, a sports code. Yeah. And I was coding it. And VB's like, oh, mate, Nick just needs to jump into him then. And I was like, well, Nick stepped him, didn't yeah. win the hit, but Brody then, Nick won the next five because Brody was like, oh, so he's going to step me. In. I can't go as early. And then Nick just jumped over him for the next five times. And I was like, he doesn't do that unless he does that. And he was like, oh, yeah, right. So I won't tell him to like, you know, just like right. little stuff like that where it's, it's a bit more of a chess game than it is, yeah. than a lot of people realize. Do you, 
have fond memories of last year. I know it doesn't end the way that you'd like to, uh, the grand final, but the run into it, the young players, young team, playing yeah, good footy. That's as much as I've enjoyed football in my time. Yeah. And on the back of, I had, sorry, <coughs> I had that turf toe. And I was like, yes, almost. I had that Essendon game when we got beat. I almost wrapped it for the year. I couldn't walk midweek. Wow. Had to get it like, could they weren't, let, weren't letting me jab it. I had carbon soles and like carbon implants in my shoes. Had to wear runners 24 seven, couldn't go barefoot. That um, would have hurt you. Yeah. You're yeah, a big barefoot yeah, operator. Yeah, it <laughs> killed me. Um, and I was like, I can't, I just can't move. And I found, I ended up getting some like local, localized cryotherapy every Tuesday and that kind of got the swelling down and wow. um, ended up, and then we got on a run and, and I, there was a little bit of media about it. We like listened to Virgil van Dyke, like a Liverpool song after every game we won, we went to the change rooms, we sung it. Like it was just like, it just felt like it didn't even, it felt like something was building, but we were just enjoying it. We knew what made us a good team. We had three things that made us a good team and <clears throat> we, uh, it was awesome. And we just like kept winning. Yeah. And then, um, obviously didn't, um, <laughs> <laughs> obviously that was like the, the way it ended was like really sour and really um like a really big dampener on, on the whole year but sometimes you got to take away the destination from the journey a little bit and that was like as fun football's ever been and then as bad as football ever been is having a three-year-old that uh comes to the game sorry yeah what i've got sip it you got plenty left <clears throat> you top up you're right no we're good um who's at the game decides that he likes the Geelong theme song <laughs> and for the next week gets me to sing the Geelong song oh, 20 no. times a day. Um, oh. And I am like, he's a three-year-old, so I'm doing it. And <laughs> he goes, Dad, I love Geelong. I was like, why? He's like, they're the greatest team of all. I was like, man, I actually <laughs> can't argue with that. Like, they beat us. <laughs> and he's still, he's still like, if I'm on the phone to one of my mates, he's like, Uncle Tom. He's like, yeah, he's like, Swanee's got beat by Geelong in the grand final pretty bad. What a constant <laughs> reminder. <laughs> and so there's one way to get over it, do the Don Pike method of just blasting the music constantly. So, um, yeah. And, but like, again, having families, you can forget about it pretty quickly. And no, I, I didn't re I haven't never watched the game again and probably won't. And yes. I still look back on that time as really, really fond. Yes. Would it, you said to me at the time, it's good to play in one, it's better to win one. Mm. I didn't quite take that advice. <laughs> um I tried. but and i ended up like got some mates tickets and stuff and i couldn't charge them for a robbie williams concert by the end of it so i ended up just <laughs> coughing the face himself because oh. i was too embarrassed so um it would have been good having your friends family like it's a it's a big moment yeah i'd say because i've lost one as well it's, and, a, it's a huge moment. and that prelim was enough it's it, not not enough like no. love would have loved to, to win grand final but that moment of winning a prelim uh, all the same mates came to the prelim that was as loud as the ground's ever been. Getting booed at your home home ground at Sydney when we ran out was like, oh, this is awesome. Like, oh my God, we've never been booed at Sydney. Like there was 12,000 Collingwood supporters and they were just mental. And it was like, awesome. Yes. And I remember going, I, I, I put the mocker on us. I remember going to Paps, we kick one more here, we're home. In the and, yard? Yeah, and Errol, Errol kicks it and hits a point and they go back and kick a goal and we were five goals up and then that's six goals up with like 20 minutes to go. Like we're- And they just put the Collingwood And then the, the, the zombies just yeah. came. They just came to life and just would not die. <laughs> um, and I thought I thought we had two points up the sleeve, not one, um, when when the siren went. But anyway, it was incredible. It was I was shocked for a bit. Like the, um, I probably felt more elated winning that Melbourne game than the, because of just like that, oh my God, we almost lost it. But the whole experience of that game was incredible. Yeah, it was bloody cool. Um, I mean, that brings us a nice little tidy bow on your career. We haven't gone through this year. Don't really want to touch on it. Given you're in the midst of it, I'd like you to see you boys rebound and finish off the year well. I want to get to this, this team. This team that you claim is the greatest team to have ever played with across the journey. Easy. I not reckon, easy, some, not easy, I reckon there's really. someone that challenges you. I'll bring it up afterwards. Yeah, I, I know two players I reckon that could challenge <clears throat> So what's the best way to do this? You want us to, you want us to read out ours and you can say, no, 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 you've got... How about I read out... How about I just tell you some what I think? Okay. Of, I'll start with the forward line. Okay. Rewalt yes. and Nerolt 
Nick, Nick Rewalt. Yep. yep. Buddy Franklin. Yep. Josh Kennedy. Yes, Josh Kennedy for West Coast, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Well, you've played with two Josh Kennedys. Yeah, but like you're thinking he's probably going to be. Just saying, mate. Line. Could be resting a midfielder in the pocket. <laughs> Stephen Milne. Yes. And then I've gone Liam Ryan and Tom Papley as my other two smalls. Just pure bums on feet, seats factor. Yes. And then I've probably put maybe Jamie Cripps on the bench just because we need someone to do the work. Like someone needs to run defensively in that group. That's a good point. It was either him or Will Haywood in terms of just defensive running. Will Haywood. Well, he's like, he's a similar role. Love that. But like you've got the likes of. Charlie Dixon, Tom Lynch, I was gonna say, Isaac t- Heaney, they all miss. They're, they're all in the twos, unfortunately, boys. Well, go get some balls. <laughs> Tommy Lynch doesn't get, yeah, I mean. No, nah, nah, unfortunately. <laughs> who, who, who does he go You past? can't play four tall. You can't play him in front of Buddy or Josh Kennedy or well, Nick Raywell. Yeah, stiff. And you can't play four big lumbering <laughs> yeah, out there. Yeah. That is unfortunate. Yeah, unfortunately. Uh, we, we were pretty close. Yeah. We are pretty close. We had Heaney potentially in there just as a bit of a, just as a bit of a name. Your current teammate, so keep moving. Yeah, uh, <laughs> midfield, Nick obviously, in the rock. Yes, um, Ablett. Yes, Kennedy. Yes. Now here's one you just won't have. I right. just, I'm certain you won't have it. I have Jack Stephen. Jack Stephen. Yeah, I have Jack Stephen. So pr- Jack Stephen in his prime yeah. was the most underrated player in the comp. It's and not a bad shout. In terms of you got your Jay like Joey, who's just a, in inside ball. You Ablett who does everything, but you need your quick feet, you need your, your speed. So unfortunately, Lenny's probably starting on the bench. So Lenny Hayes probably in the conversation, one of the greatest and killed players of all time. Mm, but I'm probably playing Jack ahead of him just for pure balance. You're picking a team. Yeah, yeah he's yeah. gone less less just names and more like building a, a, a strong. Yeah, like which I is smart. We like to see that the All Australia. I mean, we can't yeah. we can't have. So the wings are there an issue for us. Yeah. So. I so this this conversation's grown legs over. I've I've set it off the cuff. Yes, a few weeks ago when we were in the spa, and that's just it's grown. And then even horses jumped in. He heard it at one point, <laughs> and he was adamant that Lewis Jetta on the wing, twenty twelve, kicked forty goals. That's missed a, all Australian, but like you were kicking forty goals on the wing and just ran all day. We did not have him in the squad. Missed him from the squad. He kicked forty that year, and he played wing, not yeah. forward. He tells me that all the time. Yeah. He said I was. <laughs> Brothers, I play back and wing. No, no forward. Yeah. So like, he, he, he's flying. He's simply playing on the wing. Yeah, absolutely. And then the other wing is like, it's a tough one because like Gaffy, I've probably got Gaffy in there. Prime, but, prime Gaffy, one of the great wingmen of all time. Yeah. And you've also got like Del Santo and Montagna and like, but I've, I've probably got Gaff there. So we have Montagna, no Gaff. Gaff is on the pine. And then the backs. We also had just as a midfielder, like we had Luke Shuey in the mix somewhere there. Yeah. So I reckon I might have him on the pine as well. Yeah. I haven't quite all sorted out my client. Okay. We also had this. We haven't had team meetings yet. To- mm-hmm. Correct. We also had Luke Parker in there. Yeah. Again. I, Parks I realize like, it's, if, it's, if we're playing in a final, Parks plays because he just, <laughs> he just does not. He's the best final player ever. But Fair. like Kennedy, Ablett, Hayes, like you've got those yes. those bulls. Nick, um, Nick, before we get the back line, Nick also a big Sydney fan. Nick had Golden in there. Errol Golden. I mean, he will be. Yes. I'm pretty Pretty sure he will be. He could be the skipper. Like, give him five years, I'll be saying. I asked, you know the photo of Sheasel and Buddy? Yes. I was a kid, yeah. Yeah. I said, mate, can I bring Lewin to get a photo of you? (laughs) (laughs) Um, But yeah, so then... Backline, most important line. Backline. My my three keys, Rampy, McGovern, May. May. Goldhurst. Missed him. Wow. Missed him. Yeah. We were wondering who our fullback was going to be. Had Schofield look around the (laughs) edge. It's got to be honest. And then I've... It's funny, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> and then this is like where I really struggle in terms of the halfback because there's so many good players that come to the halfback. But like, we've got a lot of names on this piece, part. You know, it? like Lloyd is just gun. He, he's he's a, just a, a general back there and, and uses as well. And I, I think Sinclair, the way he runs and gun. So like they're probably my two. First. They're my two running halfbacks at this stage. Yeah. And then the. Hearn's played a lot of footy and been a very good player and he, he's a good lock defender or do we go Shepard who can genuinely lock down a... I mean, you know what the answer is. It's Shannon Hearn, mate. Yeah. Is it's it? Shannon Hearn. I had Hearn, but I've it's also Shannon like... Hearn, mate. You're not leaving Bungaree. I'm sorry. I'll, I can copy other stuff. <laughs> I can copy other stuff. Yeah, You're not leaving. I, I, had, I did have Bunger, but I, they're, they're no, like... I won't question that. I'm, I've spoken about team balance before yes. and so I kind of need to... We've to got you locked down. We've got you locked down. I don't know if you've got him. We've got your lockdown in there that you may not have, may not have him in your squad. 
Maybe like Sean Dempster or someone. The Dumpster. Yeah. Sean Dempster. Sean Dempster can absolutely lock Two down. Two-time All-Australian. Yeah, mate, apparently. Mate. <laughs> mate, One time. time. Sean Dempster was a gun. Shannon the Dumpster, was mate. Absolutely a gun. And they like... Prime, like Prime Gilbert was incredible. Sammy Gilbert's on our Prime list. Prime Gilbert was just... And he's a good mate of mine, so it's, it's hard to hard to miss him out. And like, give Liz a couple of years. Oh, the Lizard. Hey, he could be anything. The, like, the Lizard, mate. He could be so everything. It, it's a... It's, Give Chad a couple of years. Give like there's some guys coming through there. That we had Kazitsky on the pine as like a rest. <laughs> yeah, see the second ruck like just, resting just chuck Rui in there or just chuck. Rui's not playing in the ruck. He put him on the wing. He might actually play Rui on the yeah, maybe play prime, on the wing and prime. then that's a good comment. Charlie Dixon is the second ruck. I like it. If you're listening along, you want to challenge some of those. Love some comments. Sam, Sam Reed put his hand up as the second ruck there. Sammy, Sammy, mate, <laughs> did you see him last year? Hey, I'm a big Sam Reed fan. Didn't like playing on him. Good player. Mm. Unfortunately, Sammy, you're not, you're not you're just off the bench. Yeah. Just. Uh, I have a. Who's a player you think I'm thinking of that can challenge you? Well, my so my two that I've that oh, I've got guys that can challenge yeah. the, the Josh Caddy. Josh Caddy played for Richmond, played for Gold Coast, and Geelong. and Geelong. So he's got Ablett and May, yes. but he's also got Dusty. Yes, he's got very well. Yeah, mine yeah. beats my beats Caddy. Isaac Smith is also because he's got prime two prime right two primes. and then and then talking to Coxie about it he reckons Pike from Martin Pike had two unbelievable errors of North right. and I see all that I take that on board um, I raise you Matt Spanger who had prime goal prime West Coast Judd Kerr Cousins Cox you could literally have that as your, yep. so prime West Coast had Darren Glass in there Quinton Lynch maybe uh, now. Uh, <laughs> That's yeah, prime West Coast. He had prime yeah. Sydney, right? So Buddy, you go Sydney then. Buddy, all that. And no, then no, had, no, no. He had... Sorry. No. Yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> when did he go to Sydney? Pre-Hawthorne. Yeah, so he didn't have Buddy at Sydney. But he had him at Hawthorne. He had a Hawthorne, yeah. Right. No, no, get, no, 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 no. He, did, he had him at Sydney. He had him at Sydney. He definitely had him at Sydney. Anyway, he had Buddy, but he had prime Sydney in grand finals. Yes, yeah, so he's got Macca. And he had prime Hawthorne. That's, you build a team out of that, like Lewis, Hodge, Roughhead. Matt, just spend your 15 minutes. Brian Lake, <laughs> Gibson. Yeah. Like it's, I, I think it would be a good matchup, yours and his yeah. team. Um, You're simply not beating my forward line. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're simply not beating that. <laughs> no. We're simply not beating that <laughs> at all. Um, mate, I think that's a good point to just, to wrap your, your, your chat and your career, mate. Um, oh, retire me already perfect thanks no, no I'm <laughs> not, not blue not blue <laughs> I do like you it's been a great chat good journey like one of the better ones the only player to have played in every, uh, in four states you can put that hat on um, when Tassie comes that's right yeah, yeah go hang on to 2027 yeah. neat, neat animal hats please get around them neatanimalhats.com and I'd like to ask you a couple more questions from our audience with social media yeah not social you know what social yeah. is Ben J. Napple. Uh, which SA club are you leaning towards more, Crows or Power? What's happened there? I think well, to, to you, play in you South you Australia. You've got to make the full. <laughs> it's a tough one. They play with Dorse. Got the, so I've got the skipper on side at Adelaide. Played under Kenny and played with. So, I mean, I'm jumping on. The, you play, I'm jumping you, on the 11. Did you say you play with Jordan Dawson? Absolutely. It's Sydney. Oh, he's, he's, he's stiff not to make it. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, <laughs> gee. Oh, oh, my goodness. <laughs> Maybe him off the halfback. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if this is uh, Jordan's, uh, you know, social media little mate, John Dawson. <laughs> John Dawson. Uh, why do Ruckman take so long to develop? I mean, I don't know. We just <laughs> were tall and skinny. <laughs> Does it take a long time to get things from up here to down here? I mean, I reckon we've broken the mould. You might have. I reckon Ruck's I in think general have broken the mould. People who listen to this whole episode will understand that you've got a brain in there. <laughs> Some don't though. No, it's fair, fair to say. You don't, but they're becoming more and more. Really, I reckon. Do you have a secret group? We asked Ruckman on here. Do you have a secret WhatsApp group or a communication channel that we don't know about? No, nah, I've no, nah, no, we don't. I've had a few chats with a few of them, but I try not to chat to all of them during the game. Um, I won't do that one. Uh, Kyle Sinclair. Uh, so you've got a footy trip coming up. Pick one teammate from each club and why. That's good. Mm. That's I mean, it depends what kind of footy trip we want. <laughs> 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 oh, Campbell Brown, Gold yeah. Coast. Yeah. Bash someone. Didn't do yeah, but, oh, sorry, allegedly. I, I shouldn't have said He that. could organise it, though. Come He's an unbelievable organiser. Um, 
West Coast? Maybe I'd say probably Sammy Gilbert, St Kilda, because he's just like a genuine good time and doesn't he won't. He's yes. just a great time, and he's not he's not a liability. <laughs> there's a few liabilities. A few guys are really good time, but they're a really big liability. Yes. And then West Coast, I had kids, mate, so I didn't get to go out with anyone. Um, TB just for some real deep charts. You're going to say <laughs> that you two would get stuck right into it. Yeah. In Sydney. Who's your oh, Sydney play for four, haven't I? <laughs> <laughs> I definitely haven't gone out and had beers with anyone. Um, <laughs> oh, probably Rams. Oh, Rams is... Mm. Sure, you just take the Lizard. Yeah, the Lizard, because, like... Nah, just, I, I feel like Errol would get it. Yeah, like, Errol, Errol on your lap. Liz, Liz or Will Haywood is a good time. Good. Yeah. Uh, similar question, really. Jacob Wilmot. Uh, you can bring three ex-teammates to your club. Who do, who are you picking? Tom, Dr. Ba Supply. Tom Barris. Good. I like that. We tried. Um, <laughs> we need, be a be, present tense. I don't know. Could be good to get a, a big key defender in. Um, I mean, like Tom Lynch to come in would be great as well. Have another spearhead yes. when Bud's done. Yes. And then just talking on current form, maybe like Jack Sinclair would be. He's a good player. Yeah. Did you did you play in the Buddy Thousand? I did. Game? Yeah. What was that like when the crowd rushed? Mental, mental. Great question. I got, I got to him, I reached him, and Did then, you? and then got like got <laughs> swallowed, beat, and then like I didn't get in any of the photos, but I got to him. So that's so I've got one like, where were you when he kicked it? Like as he's, I was like on the fifty. I saw some people set up, but I was like getting a bit closer. Thought about like, what set you, up, set up. But, like, yeah. Try. I wanted to get around him. <laughs> um, and then I like it was awesome, 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 and then like hated it. Really? Yeah, because like. People Crazy. realize they couldn't get to buddies and like, we're just going to get to any player. Um, I may have thrown a punch. <laughs> <laughs> because you, you're in like playing mode and you're like adrenaline sky high. And then all of a sudden you're just like thousands of people are on top of you. And yeah. I was like, oh my God, like I need to get out of here. So like I was loving it for like 10 minutes and then it was like, I'm a long way from where I need to be. How did you get back i just looked through i just looked through everyone and as you got further away it got a bit more dispersed because people have picnics and like <laughs> people spreading ashes it was, yeah, there was the people time, spreading yeah. ashes what yeah someone yeah, had someone, like their grandma their that loved the swans oh, i mean rest in peace but I mean, it's probably better times there's not much peace there is there just <laughs> send an email to the club and say we'd like to spread yeah. the ashes it's not in the middle of the game um yeah right because there's boys out in the street wasn't there yeah yeah they, yeah, they got directed to go they're, they're walking up driver ave and <laughs> That's very good. Uh, two to go. Krillian, 1997. Uh, is it true you try and become friends with every Ruckman you play against? Uh, who's the friendliest? I mean, Gorney's a pretty good guy. We have genuine chats. I, I like to chat when I play footy. Yeah. Like, just friendly chats? Yeah. Just. Why Tell not? Them, man. Yeah. How are you? I remember I was like, versus Tim Membry in 2021. I was like, how's the fan, mate? He's like, mate, shut up. Play footy. <laughs> I was like... <laughs> How's Marley? How's the dog? And like, I knew I had him. So I just kept asking him how, like, <laughs> got here. Got here. So I just like, yeah. The um, egg man. The egg man. Uh, how Pinch do you like, off. how do you like your eggs cooked? I wear scramble every morning. What's that type of egg that's, um, it's like as a name, it's like slow cooked, but it's like 63 a, degree egg. 60 degree egg. Yeah. I was really thinking that was going to come no, out of your mouth. Absolutely not. I thought you were going to give me some alternate weird reality. <laughs> uh, egg. We're done, mate. Um, we appreciate your time. You're going to get home to the twins. Uh, but more importantly, Chloe, chop her out. Um, thank you. It's raining outside. Yeah, I, was, I meant to take him to the park. It might be a bit late. Don't think that's going to go on. It's not that late. It's like it's like pitch black. It was four o'clock. Uh, a big thank you to our supporters, our sponsors, Fleet Network, Swimply, Whippersnapper Whiskey, Mullet River Roasting Co., Blue Bet, Shelter Brewing Co. and Leadable Cameras, VIPs, you know what to do. Patrons, we've got one more story from Tom Hickey coming up. Backchatpodcast.com.au, backchatstudios.com.au. Jump on socials. Watch Buy on hats. YouTube. Buy hats. Need animal hats. Please. Buy hats. Com. Need it. Hats, beanies. <laughs> and we need bucket hats too.